I have opened my phone list query where it contains all my employees, their last name, first name, and phone extensions. And I want to be able to create a report and base it upon this query where I can print it off and hand it to the employees so they can have each other's phone extensions. But it's not going to be a simple report. I want to be able to also group and sort this report by the first letter of each employee's last name. For example, like a Rolodex, you have all the letter A's together, B's and C's and so on. Also, this doesn't take up much space on the report, right? In other words, by default, it's going to have this all on the left-hand side of the page. And you can imagine if I had hundreds or thousands of employees that I'd have dozens or hundreds of pages. And all that space in the middle of the page and to the right is going to be wasted. So what I'm going to do next is convert that page from the default single column to a two or more column. So it can start in the left hand, go over and continue in the middle of the page, the second column, and then go over to the right, the third column, and then continue on to page two, three, and so on. So to get started, I'm going to close out of my phone list query here and create my report. Come up, click on the Create tab, go to the Reports group, and click on the Report Design button. Okay, first of all, this report is going to be based upon the phone list query. So that's what I need to set up. I'm going to come over here and double click in the blue area to bring up the property sheet for the report. And on the Alt tab, set the record source here by clicking on the drop down arrow to the phone list query. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the property sheet. And then next, I want to be able to save my report. Click on the Save button and type in the first three letter prefix of RPT for the report. And then the name of the report, which will be my phone list and then hit enter. Now I already have it listed here. I'm just going to go ahead and replace it and overwrite it and click yes. Next up at the top here I need some sort of title for my report and I'm going to put a label up in the page header section so when I print it off people know that this is Dreamforce's internal phone list. I need a little bit more space up here between the page header and the detail section so when I hover over the detail bar I'm looking for my pointer to turn into a two-way arrow where I can click and drag and push the detail bar down just a bit and then come up here on the design tab to the controls group and click on the label button come down and click in the page header section and then just start typing to fill in the label with and then hit enter Dreamforce's internal phone list and then I can go ahead and click and drag that detail bar up just a little bit closer to the label okay next I could add the fields right in other words come up here on the design tab and click add existing fields the last name field the first name and the extension well Instead of adding the last and first name fields here and then trying to squish them together so they're, you know, last name, comma, first, if I want it to actually look like that, last name, comma, first, then I'm going to come up here and create my own custom field and use the uh, concatenate. It's using a formula or a function to be able to combine those two fields and then, of course, have my little comma separating those fields. Let me show you. Come up here on the Design tab to the Controls. We want to add a text box. When I click on it, come down here in the Details section and click where I want to dump it. As you recall, it'll add the label and the unbound text box. I'm going to go ahead and select the label and delete it. I just want the text box here, okay? That text box, I'm going to be able to insert my formula to combine the last and first name. So I want to close out of the field list or just actually come up here and click on the Property Sheet. It will convert it from the field list to the Property Sheet. And then on the All tab in the Control Source cell, this um, function is going to be a bit lengthy. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the Shift key and hit F2, and it will actually expand or zoom into that cell so you can see everything that I'm doing here. I'm going to go ahead and type it in, then I'll explain it after. Equals open square bracket, the name of the field, which I'm going to have first, last name, or just type in last close square bracket and then the ampersand sign or shift 7 K okay? space and then open quotes and then I'm gonna put in my comma here space close quotes because I'm gonna have my last name and then of course I want a comma and a space separating my first name so I'll hit the space bar and then do an ampersand and then go ahead open square bracket and then type in first the name of my field for a first name close square bracket and that's it these ampersands, what they're doing is they're going to concatenate or combine the last and the first name fields. And then in between that, whatever I have in quotes, it's just going to display uh, the comma and the space. So it's not going to think of it as part of the formula here, just display what's in between the quotes. So when I'm finished, I can go ahead and click OK, hit Enter, 
And then I'm going to go ahead and add my extension field. Come up here and click on the Add Existing Fields. Remember my phone extension? I'm going to go ahead and click and drag that down into the Details section. I'm going to delete the label of it. So I just have the text box that's pulling in the data. And I'm going to drag both of these into the upper left-hand corner of the Details section as close as I can. First the concatenate function or formula there that's combining the last name and first name. And then to the right of that, we're going to have the phone extensions. We'll clean it up a little bit more later, but let's continue on. Now, like I said, I want to be able to sort group by the first letter of everybody's last name. To do that, I'm going to come up here on the Design tab to the Group and Totals group and click on the Group Sort button, where down below it gives me the Group Sort and Total pane. Well, I'm going to come over here and close out of the field list so I can see a little bit more down here. And I'm going to click on Add Group. When I click on it, it says, OK, you want to group by what? The last name, first name, or extension? I don't want to group by any of those. I want to be able to group by the first letter of everybody's last name, just not the last name. So to do that, I want to create an expression or the ability to open up the expression builder and type in my function. We're going to use the left function. And the left function and the concatenate formula is something I've already covered in my Excel 2007 training videos, so you may want to watch those. But in any case, let's go ahead and type in the equals sign and then type in left because that's the name of the function, open parentheses, open square bracket, and we're going to type in the name of the field. Remember, we want the first letter of the last name, so we're going to add the field last, close square bracket, and then go ahead and type in comma, and then the number one, and then close parentheses. So this is how it works. The left function says, I'm going to go ahead and look in the field. What's the field? The last name. I'm going to look and start on the leftmost part of that field. My name, last name is Kershaw, so it's going to start with the letter K. It's the left part of that field, right? This number one says to just stop counting at the first character in the last name. If I wanted to stop counting at the second or third character, I would type in two, three, four, and so on. So in other words, again, this left function will group and sort the first letter of everybody's last name. Now, I'm going to have to retype this function in again later. So instead of having to retype it, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second, I'm going to go ahead and select it and Control c to copy it and click OK. And it adds the header group where it's going to be sorting and grouping by the first letter of everybody's last name. Now stay with me, this is a process. I'm not done yet, okay? And hopefully at the end it'll all mesh together. So now that we have it sorting by the first letter of everybody's last name, and it's grouped together as well, what if we have some of the letter B's at the bottom of one page breaking across onto page two or three? So I want to come down here and click on the more drop down arrow, and where it says do not keep groups together on one page, I do. Click on the drop down arrow and say keep whole groups together on one page. Obviously, if we have thousands of Smiths, it's not going to be able to cram them all into one page, but it'll do the best it can to keep those groups together on one page. Now, in this header section, I want to be able to add an unbound text box where it just contains the first letter of everybody's last name. I mean, it's already grouping by the first letter of everybody's last name, but if I can actually have the actual letter here, that's going to be displayed above each group. So for the letter A's, I could have the letter A. The letter B's, you know, for all the B's, the letter B. Wouldn't that be cool? So it would help when everybody's flipping through the reports to look for the B's, the C's, and so on. So to do that, I'm going to come up here on the Design tab to the Controls group and add my Unbound text box. Click on it. Come down here and click in the, well, the function, the left function header section. Click on it. It adds the label and the uh, Unbound text box. We're going to delete the label, select it, and hit the Delete key. And select the Unbound text box. Let me double click on it to bring up the property sheet. And in the control source, remember how we copied the left function, you know, right here, equals left. All I have to do is go ahead and control V's and Victor to paste it and hit enter. So let me see if I can break this down. We have it grouping and sorting by the first letter because we have the left function here, the first letter of everybody's last name. There's the last name field. Not only is it going to be grouping and sorting by that, but it's also going to display that, the first letter of everybody's last name within that group, at the heading of each group. And that's what the unbound text box is here for, okay? I'm going to click and drag that over there. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the property sheet. The next thing I need to do is to be able to break this page up into columns and not just have it listed over to the left-hand side and wasting all the space in the middle and over to the right. 
To do that, I'm going to come up here and click on the Page Setup tab come to the page layout group and click on its expandable dialog box button so I can get more options. Click on the columns tab. I'm going to set my columns. You can see by default it's just one to three. And then hit the tab key. And then you have the spacing in between each column. Right now it's a quarter inch. Maybe we can make it 0 0.20. Get them a little bit closer together. This may be a trial and error thing after we go through it and we view it. If it doesn't work we can always come back of course and make changes here. And then for the column size, I don't like that. I'm going to go uncheck, same as detail. And for the width, each column I'm going to say is, I'm going to type in two, in two inches, is the width for each column. And then the height of each column is going to be five and a quarter. And you can see what it's going to do, it's going to go across and then down. That doesn't make sense to me. How about down and across? There we go. So it's going to list all the letter A's go down, and if there's more letter A's, it's going to go back up and start in the second column and then go down, and then up to the third column and go down. Go ahead and click OK. And let me close out of the group, sort, and total pane. The final thing I need to do is to be able to crunch this all together because by default, we've got the details section way too far apart. In other words, you're going to have the first record here, and then it's going to have all the space before it hits the next record, then all the space. So I'm going to come down here and click and drag the, the page footer bar up to try to collapse it and crunch it as close as I can to the detail bar as well. So there's less space in between each record. Be sure to save my work and then go ahead and right click on the tab and let's go to print preview. We've got the Dreamforce's internal phone list. We have it grouped by the A's, the B's, and the C's. Again, it's the left function. By default, if I just had the header bar there, where it's grouping by the header, I wouldn't have the A's or the B's. The left function is grouping them by the first letter of the last name. But because I also added within that header bar section the left function again, it's saying, okay, we'll just add the letter A at the beginning of the A group, the letter B at the beginning of the B groups, and so on. And it's going all the way down to the bottom, hits the R's, and then it goes on to the next column, the second column here, and then the third column. In fact, I may have more space to add a fourth or even a fifth column here. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.